I'd like to go ahead and give you a market update on Farmington Hills. Today's March 1st, 2023, and the numbers for what happened in February were just published. I'd like to get these to you as quickly as possible so that you can understand what's really going on in your area, rather than relying on these narratives that the national news media seems to be driving. What I'm looking at right now is, as always, we start with value. Everyone loves to know, is my house worth more, is it worth less? Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. Like today, we're looking at the published price, the average home sale in Farmington Hills for February was $298,000, just over $298,000. And that's down significantly from January when the average price was $322,000 and some change. I always leave off this last couple because it's a mouthful. Um, anyway, at first glance, that is a bit disheartening, right? Uh, it sounds like our values are going down, they're going down drastically, that's like seven, eight percent, and that's a huge drop. What we have to pay attention to is, especially in our area of the world, the country, is that seasonality really affects what's going on with the pricing. And so if we're just looking at the immediate past, we've had another, we had a price drop, and it's the lowest that we've seen since last February. Last February also appeared to be a price drop. What happens is, uh, especially in Farmington Hills, we see this huge gap between the like end of spring, early summer selling prices and in the winter time. It almost seems like people are offloading and they're looking for deals in the winter. Only you know hardcore buyers are uh, looking, not only because we also had a, a very expensive home that sold. What we're seeing is that uh, there were a couple of inexpensive condos and we actually had a uh, fixer upper that sold for well under $100,000 that seemed to really have influenced the prices for the month. Um, we're really gonna wanna pay attention over the next month or two and see if we start to see that seasonal increase in prices as well, or is this kind of the forewarning of what's to come? Um, looking at the rest of the area, Everything else seems to be trending exactly online for uh, small increases month to month. They were actually seeing increases early. Um, you know, typically for our area, January, February are the low point in terms of numbers of sales, in terms of average dollars per sale, in terms of um, how many homes are available. And for a lot of our area, December was actually that month and we've been seeing early signs of recovery. So this is actually very interesting. I'll be paying extra special attention to it um, uh, this month and I'll give you a full report again in a month and let you know what's happening. In the meantime, all the rest of the numbers are, are looking really solid. I mean, um, in terms of our days on market, we're at 32 days, which is up a little bit, but well below normal for our area. If there is a normal anymore, uh, in terms of number of homes that were for sale, our inventory stayed very steady. Uh, we were 87 homes available, and that's compared to 88 homes available in January. So we haven't seen a, a rise in inventory, which is the thing we wanna be uh, keeping an eye out for. In terms of number of homes sold, we actually sold even more homes in uh, February than we did in January. So we're already seeing an increase in terms of uh, the, the volume of the market. And at the same time, that number that I'm always paying attention to, the one that typically indicates the true direction of the market is that month's supply. In other words, how long would it take to sell all of the homes currently available on the market if nothing else became available? And right now we're sitting at 1.0. And typically in Farmington Hills, what we typically in Farmington Hills, what we see is if there's below a 1.5 month supply that our prices are actually increasing. Um, it's just kind of hard to tell sometimes because I don't know, the nature of statistics, right? If we're only selling 50 or 60 homes a month, it's really not enough to get a solid trend line. And we can manipulate the data and we can look at three month and six month trend lines and things like that, and it seems to help. But this month's supply is the best way of looking at actual real-time data and getting a grasp of what's going on. So even though we have that, that apparent loss in value, I, well, I wouldn't guarantee it, but I expect to see that as we hit the spring that we start posting higher and higher numbers, especially if interest rates stay flat or decrease at all. Um, and next week or later this week, we're supposed to hear, I think the Fed uh, mentioned that they were gonna be um, posting another increase to the base rate. But my banker tells me he thinks it's already been built into the market. So I don't know, as always, it's above my head. If you like talking about that kind of stuff, let me introduce you to my personal banker 
he's a great guy and has a great way of uh, explaining very complicated subjects like how mortgage rates are where they are and what's happening <clears throat> so that month's supply um, we're low right normally we only see price actually normally we only see price increasing when we're at a 2.7 month supply Anytime we're below that 1.5, like our prices are normally m rapidly increasing. So I wouldn't say it's shocking to see that we've seen a decrease. We have these two conflicting events happening. You know, we have our the, the depths of the winter. We have our winter baseline. At the same time, we have this complete lack of inventory. So they're kind of in opposition. And it's going to be interesting to see as we move into the spring selling season, what actually has happened with the prices. Do we see an increase in inventory or do we see an increase in sales? Um, I think the interest rates at this point, for the most part, we have accepted grudgingly that we're not going to see 3% again. You know, we're going to be in the sixes, we're going to go up to the sevens, go down into the fives. Who knows? But the reality is we're now at interest rates that are higher than they were, you know, as we were in that recovery period. Now, historically, we're still at a great interest rates. Um, so, and uh, for most people, and for a lot of people, the interest rate just turns into a tax write-off and so it's kind of money out of pocket but I, I don't know accounting not my thing anyway um, I probably suggest you take a look at our market report on all of southeast Oakland County this gives, gives you more of a regional view of what's happening because uh, you know it's look imp it's important to look at the micro events look at the individual cities what are the numbers what's actually happening but paying attention to the region as well because there is so much influence between the cities and you know looking at buyers in particular they may be aiming for one particular city or school district but depending on the homes that are available depending on um, you might have been shooting for Northville when you originally uh, moved and ended up finding the home that you're in now and love in Farmington Hills you know it's not it's always so interesting the way that our searches evolve and the requirements evolve over time um, so just part of the fun of what we do. Anyway, take a look. Here's our Southeast County market update um, for today as well. I just filmed this a few minutes ago so you can get that regional view. If you'd like to take a look at some of the other cities, we're going to go through and you can see the list of all of the current market updates right here. Um, you know, I like to do some big cities, some small towns, and really get a feel for what's happening. Anyway, as always, if you want to know how this impacts you and your home and your specific situation, I'm always happy to, you know, sit down for 15. I'm always happy to sit down for 15 or 20 minutes and discuss what's going on, understand your situation, and make sure that you have the the knowledge and the information so that you're able to make decisions based on reality and truth that are going to be the best decisions for you. As always, I'm Brian Hayes. I'm a 3DX Real Estate. Looking forward to talking to you.